Welcome, fellow adventurers, and join me, Bastish B, as I'll be exploring classic RPGs from the 8 and 16 bit generations, both console and computer, whether it be half fantasy or lo fi safa. All roads will eventually lead to. Tales of a Dungeon Basher. Sword of Vermilion, or simply Vermilion as it's known in Japan, was released in 1989 by Sega, with English versions hitting the Genesis and European Mega Drive in 1990 and 91 respectively. It's an action RPG developed by Sega's own AM2 Studios, headed up by arcade veteran Yu Suzuki. It was a strange game made by this team, and like nothing else they had done before, with most of their games being massive action-styled arcade games like Space Harrier, Outrun, Afterburner and Power Drift. RPG these were a huge genre in Japan, and Sega needed an offering early in the Mega Drive's life cycle to capture that ever-growing Japanese RPG audience. And they turned to AM2, their resident arcade hitmakers, to deliver the goods. With heavyweights Yu Suzuki as producer and Hiroshi Kawaguchi on music, the man responsible for some of the best arcade soundtracks ever produced, including Space Harrier and Outrun, it was full steam ahead. The game's plot revolves around the land of Excalibria, which gets invaded by the evil bad guy. King Sarkon. The land is decimated and before the fall of King Eric's castle, the King of Excalibria, he orders his main knight to escape with his young son. Clearly the team had just watched 1988's Willow as the plot is exactly the same. The story then picks up 18 years later with you finding out that you're actually the king's son, which sets you out on your quest of revenge. You need to gather the eight rings of good and the sword of vermilion to ultimately defeat Sarkon. The game definitely shows its team's arcade roots with game play being an almost 50-50 mix of traditional RPG tropes and fast-paced arcade-styled action, similar to the Ease series of RPG games. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. And now let's jump into the game itself, which is a mixture of many styles, giving it a lot of variety in terms of looks and gameplay. There's four main views of play, with the towns serving up the overhead view where you can chat to NPCs, gather quests and info, and most importantly, visit all those shops which run the gamut of weapons, armor and magic, with equipment and spells to purchase, and I'd highly recommend picking up a lamp as soon as possible, as you'll need one to explore dungeons, candles are just totally useless and don't last long. Plus there's inns, taverns, churches for dispelling curses, and where you get resurrected if you die, and the useless fortune teller who takes your money and tells you things you already know, just like the real life charlatans of the business. When you leave towns it switches to a first person view as you explore the land might and magic style, and as you can see from this world map, it's a big place to travel around with 14 different towns, each with their own corresponding dungeon to conquer. Encounters are random in typical JRPG style, and switches to a three quarters style view where you either hack the beasts up or use projectile magic and if things get really bleak you can escape as fast as you can. Entering dungeons where most of the quests usually end up leading to, you can find items around every corner, fight many variations of the beasts and usually face off against a boss character known as arch monsters. The view then flips one more time to a side view where dodging and hacking as quickly as possible is needed to win. Unlike most RPGs, Vermilion is fairly fast paced, besides the town aspects it bops along pretty briskly so you never really get bored. The combat 
combat is a bit basic, but once you get enough money for spell books, it gets pretty fun and interesting to mix it up with fast hack and slash gameplay and projectile attacks. The story is also pretty engaging and interesting, without getting too convoluted like a lot of JRPGs. And the difficulty is mid, although you will die quite a bunch of times in the beginning. But fear not, you simply just lose cash as you get resurrected in the local church, so you're always progressing stat-wise anyway. Kawaguchi's music score is the real highlight here, being not only catchy and infectious, but also adding to each scenario immensely. It's one of the Mega Drive's best RPG soundtracks, hands down. This game is often disregarded in the Genesis and Mega Drive library just due to its really early release nature, and the fact that Sega's other RPG heavyweights like the Fantasy Star and Shining Force series kinda always steal the limelight. It's not gonna be an RPG for everyone, with its multiple gameplay styles being either interesting for you or possibly off-putting, but I feel it's a nice well-crafted variation on a genre that can often be a cliché of itself.